Good morning. We're back. <laughs> Welcome to Saturday Craft. <laughs> right, first thing I want to show you, last week I talked about Granny Square Day, which was on Monday. And for Granny Square Day this week, this year, I made these Granny Squares. But as I was making it, I was thinking, I don't want to be like the one I showed you last week and it sits in my my box for the next two, three years until I decide what to do with it. So as I was making it, I decided I would make a bag with it. Now, because I decided that after I started making it, I had no pattern. So what I did, and what you call this is freehand construction, because I followed instructions for each square, um, and I will add them which books I got these squares from, but you can use any square. All you need to do to make this particular type of bag is to have six or the same size and then four a smaller size that is the only pattern I followed but after I did that I was thinking well what shape is my bag I know I, I like rounded bottoms random bottoms uh, um, on bags so I started making this is a 40 chain and I made you only increase on the ends you don't increase anywhere else and you, you keep it under 10 increases. And you just keep laying it out as you do each row, making sure it's not rippling. If it's rippling a bit, less increases on the next row. If it's curling up, you want more increases. But you don't ever have more than 10. So you start putting spaces between them. So I did one full sequence of each colour, bar the dark. Because the dark is what I was using to join everything with. Now, all my joins on this bag are single crochet in the back loop. And what that does is it puts the protruding bit into the back of the bag. And because I'm, I was going to line the bag, you're not going to see it. So I did that until it fit. And what I did is I sewed all the big squares around so they made a band so then I could fit the bottom and sew it or crochet it together as I needed it. And then these little squares here are exactly half the size of the big squares. So I put them in the middle where I wanted the handles to be because I wanted to make a very open mouth bag because I'm going to use it as a project bag. So I need it to easily fall open. So I did that. And then you have this big gap and these were quite, the, the edge was quite low. So I did a sequence all the way around the handle. Now, the handle and this top edge, they're all one piece. And you can decrease in here to bring this edge inwards so that it, it curves the bag up to hold all your crap in. And But I didn't do all the colours all the way around because that thicker handle is a bit silly. I mean, you could do it, but not for me. So I did two rows. Well, the grey, I did an edge of grey around and then the grey goes on the inside to be the handle and then I did a full run around the inside of the handle so that it would look right and then we did two runs the white and the pink all the way around but then the next two they stopped here and we did a two increases here uh, decreases here just to pull it in a bit and then I did another full run in the pink and then another two only to here on both sides and then the last run which is like the light turquoise that went all the way around and then we did a crab stitch edging just to give it a bit of firmness and join everything together because um, my yarn was very soft so you can see some of the decreases are pulling a bit I, I can't help that there's the handle's big enough that it will um not pull too badly I'll just turn and show you the other side so I tried to pick squares when I was making them that were alternating between dimensional flowers and flat. So like the one on the end here, this is like a starburst granny. And then the one on this end is uh, like a flat, but it's got loose, bring it up so it focuses, hopefully. Not focusing very well today. Okay. So anyway, that is my granny squared bag. And I also, I cheated slightly when I made the lining 
because what I did is uh, a lot of these have quite large holes. I mean, you can see the back of the cloth here. So I, I got some Visaflex, and if you don't know what Visaflex is, it's double-sided interfacing. When you buy interfacing, one side is usually sticky, and the other side is just like a thin cotton material. Visaflex is double-sided, so basically it's a heat-activated glue um, with paper on one side. So the, the glue that you can feel will only get sticky when heat's applied. And so I cut myself pieces that were the size of where the holes were, not the size of the whole square. Let's push that up a bit. And then I've, I have I ironed them to the back of the, the squares with the biggest visible areas of holes. Let's turn that over. Like this one here, this one's got it on the back. And then I pulled the paper off. And then when I made the lining, made it fit the bottom and then pinned everything so it was nice and flat and then ironed, take the paper off and ironed the Visiflex. And then I cut myself a really thin strip of Visiflex and laid it underneath the turnover edge of the lining. Ironed that down. I didn't need to pin it to sew this in. I hand sew the top of my um, linings in just with a whip stitch because you can pick half the yarn up and you won't see it from the other side. If you use a machine, it'll go all the way through and for really soft um, yarn, it will sometimes it will cut. A sewing machine, there's too much tension in the yarn and it will cut your thread. So that's what I did for Granny Square Day this year. And I've, I mean, I've taken it out now, but I've already got a project in it. So I'd say it's working. <laughs> so that was this week's project. Now, back to our iguana. I have put a link to the Ravelry page of the pattern I'm using. It came in this book. I did say this at the beginning when I started making it, but um, I thought I'd say it again. So it's from a Simply Crochet, and it's called the Endangered Animals Booklet. Um, there is a link. All the all the pictures from this book are made from Sirada, Sir, Sir, I can't say it properly, Happy Cotton. Uh, so I've already made the snail from here, but we are making the Fiji banded iguana, but I've put a link to the Ravelry page where it um, gives you the pattern or a link to the pattern. So I'll put that off to the side. Last week we put, I showed you how to put the safety eyes in and how to do the decreasing. So this week we should be able to put the wire skeleton in and I'll show you how I work out how to do wire skeletons because we want our iguana he's going to have legs pretend the scissors are the legs so we want him to stand up off the table so he needs wire available on a skeleton so that he can stand up he's got to have enough strength in his little legs but because we're not using the same yarn. We don't know how big he will be. Now, the pattern says her one will be 20 centimetres long. So I get my broken ruler. 20 centimetres long is that long. I think mine's going to be bigger than that because he's already halfway and we haven't even got to his tummy. So what I usually do is we work out how big just his head is. Now, that is five centimetres long. So we get a handy-dandy bit of paper. If he's five centimetres long, now this is just an approximation. We need to times that by six because he has a tail as well. So five sixes are 30, aren't they? They were when I went to school anyway. So we need, we are guessing... When he's finished, he will be 30 centimetres long. So if I put my finger where the 20 is, he will be around that long. Um, so I can't really show you. If I put him right up here, put his nose on the edge of the book, he's five, so... 
move that out of the way. That gets us to 20 here. I've got my finger on the table. And then we add another 10. That's here. So the edge of that book. Edge of that book right there. So he will be quite a long dude. And uh, as I said last week, he's going to turn out a bit bigger than I wanted, but I would just go with it. I'm, like, I was going to make a, a smaller rainbow one, but I didn't get to it today, so maybe next week. <laughs> I'll try. So why do I times it by six? Well, when you do drawing and getting perspectives right, if you look at a um, Da Vinci life model equations, the head of anything is one-sixth the size of the body. It's only a rough guide. It's not exact. You don't have to go and tell me I'm wrong about, I don't know, blue-footed iguanas in Antarctica. It's a guide. The thing with making a wire skeleton is you can always change it. It's wire. You just cut off what you don't want or uh, twist on a bit more. But it's just to get us started. So anyway, knowing that 30 centimetres is what we start with, and but that's from the tip of his nose. I don't want to pull out the tip of his nose, so I'm going to be putting his head ring back here on our where we did our decreasing. So I will be, we've stuffed this as pretty firmly, and I will be seating his neck ring here. Now, you don't know what I mean by neck ring, that's fine. I will get the wire because we've got to do this first so that we can work around it for the next lot of crochet. For my skeletons in my amigurumi i use aluminium wire i did used to use um doubled up uh what do you call them pipe cleaners chenille sticks um they're all right but they do get weak this is what i used to use when i made cloth art dolls now if you know what cloth art dolls are good on you but they are uh, human representations that people make and they have wire skeletons they have poseable fingers they have eyes they have eyelids um i did enjoy making them. i used to like making dragons but um that's just what with this yarn this wire is for so it's aluminium wire so it's easily moved by your hands see i can put a bend in it quite easy and i've got a thick one and a thin one i i don't know if i'll need wire in his fingers so I might just, I'll do his wire from his neck to his tail and then I might just do his leg wires and that will do for now. So first of all, we've got to measure off the 30 centimetres. So measure it on our ruler. So that's 20 there. And that's all right. So that's that's the 30 there. Get my handy dandy little cutters. Now I'm going to add let's say about three or four centimeters extra. And that's how easy it is to cut. That's another reason why I like this. So I'm just going to turn the very end over just the width of my pliers. Because that will be the tip of his tail and I don't want it coming out. My wire, I need my pliers to open further. Let's see if we can squish that down. Yes, I know I should have gripped pliers, but the only ones I had at the moment are my jewellery ones that have... The padding on them so it's slipping a little bit right so that's what you do at the end now if he ends up shorter than this i'll just cut that off and do it again closer up but i'd rather have more than i need than less than i need so now you're going to say well the whole thing's only 30 centimeters why did you do 30 centimeters it's going to be too long well, if you remember i said I'm not taking out the head because we've already got the eyes in. We've already packed the nose. All I'm going to do is to seat it on here. So if we take off 
the five centimeters for the head not take it off but mark it that's what we will bend around so we bent that at the five centimeters and we will make a ring with it and that will be our neck ring doesn't have to be a perfect ring it just has to be a shape so that it will press up against what's already there so that will go in here like this pushing down in the middle and that will be his skeleton to hold him up it doesn't look like much but it'll be enough really it's just to hang the legs off <laughs> Because it's not gonna, he's not going to pose with his neck up. I mean, he probably could, but he might be too firmly packed to do that to begin with. So we've got a curve at the end. We've got our neck, neck ring here. So that's that part. Now we need legs. Once again, we don't know at this point in time how long his legs are. So I'm going to guess he's not, from, from what I know of iguanas and geckos, they haven't got huge legs. So I'm going to guess, sit that in there and just look at it. He's going to be, I don't think he'll get much wider. So I reckon if we do 20 centimetres and then twist it at the middle, that will do for his legs. So cut ourselves two pieces at 20 centimetres. This is all these measurements are just me working off the size of his head. So if you're the head of yours, you've got to work it out. So we need two of those. So we'll cut another one. Do this <coughs> down here. Just cut. All right, so there's our two ones. And just a point. I am not using the Cyrodiil Happy Cotton because I don't have any. I have, I'm using Brighton Cotton from Spotlight in town. And they use a 2.75 hook. I am using a 3 millimeter hook. This is what I'm using for the whole iguana. So my hook is bigger. Uh, I'm not sure how big Cyrodiil Happy Cotton is. But what have we got? 20 grams gives you 43 meters. This is how you work out how much bigger what you're making is. So if I look at the band on my yarn, we get 95 meters in 50 grams. They have a 20 gram ball. So you do, I haven't got my thing here, but what you need to do is they've got a 20 gram ball equaling 43 meters. I have a 50 gram ball equaling. 95 meters so you either double you either double their number or you halve my number doubling their number 43 that becomes 86 that's for 40 so 50 it's going to be fairly close so i'm doing it with a hook only slightly bigger than what they'd use and yarn that's fairly similar in amount because if you're going by the weights of their yarn i'm getting the same amount of meterage or pretty close to the same amount of meterage i i'm only approximating um i'm not sure how much exactly it is but it's pretty close so i'd say the difference in hook size makes a difference but i'm happy with this one so maybe my little one he'll, he'll come out the size i want to so anyway, so that's our start off skeleton. Now, this one won't stay in here until we get the um, bit more of the body done. Uh, in the pattern, it says you can use the images as a guide when making up your iguana. So that's telling you that just use the picture. There's no specific row you attach your legs to. There's no specific place you put the feet on. So you need to look at your picture. Now, this is our picture here. 
bring it across so you can see. This way. Now, on the iguana, this is the decrease in the neck. Have them looking at each other. That little decrease there is our little decrease there. So his legs are, at least what it looks like in the picture, his legs are one, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe between the sixth and seventh row is where the legs come out. So if we look at ours, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so ours are coming out there. So if we get this, lost it now, haven't I? Yes. One, two. Line him up. And so his eyes are level. That way we know we're looking at the side. That's our decrease row. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Between there. Now on my dude, that looks too far forward. So I'm going to move him down to between the 8th and the 9th. So I'm going out. Hold him straight. And then go here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Right there. Now, is that level? No, it's not. It's too high. The next one down. Is that level for legs? Hmm. Looks, looks, looks all right. Yeah, I think we can do that. So that is where his first legs are going to be. Now, I'm not going to attach the spine to the, the legs. But what I'm going to do is as I pack it out, I'm going to put it underneath because that's going to sink down and then it's going to pull the legs forward. I don't want that. So that's just going to sit in there and it's basically going to be floating in it. So this will only come back in when I add more um, working to it. All right. So all I'm going to do with that now is just bend them both over and out the way. Because it's aluminium, I can do that. And we will carry on with our crochet until we get to the back legs. But if I add more stuffing, I will put this in. That way it's getting packed into the body. Uh, right, so the next part of our pattern. We got up to round 30. And all we are doing is three rows, one, two, three, of the same colour. Yes. So that's what we've done there. Um, we can we can do a couple of rows. It's not going to be terribly exciting for you, but I can show you again how I do my stitch marker, which is our contrast thread. If I hold it up, you should be able to just see the different color thread going up. And at the end, or when we run out of thread, all we do is cut down here and pull it out a bit, not all the way through, and then we can keep using the same thread. So we've got to do three rows of it plain. Now I'll try and keep it up so you can see it. So flip that over and do the first one. And that's all it is. I am a over yarn over um, crochet. What that means is when I go through, the yarn goes over my hook. There is another way to do it where you go like that, and it's called a yarn under, and it does change the look of the stitch. I'll do another one so you can see it in comparison. So you were going 
over the yarn and pulling it. And see how the stitch looks smaller than compared to the ones I've already done. It, it turns it a bit more. Um, either way is fine. Yarn under is a good for tapestry crochet because it gives you a smaller stitch and then you can be more defined with your edges. I, I do machilla bags, machilla wayu bags, and um, I use the yarn over because it gives me a flatter finish. You know, it squares up my stitches, so when you want to see the colours, you can see them better. Everything is entirely your choice. Um, I'm just telling you what that means if you see it on a, a pattern, you know, doing a, a yarn over, like... The yarn goes over the hook to pull it under or pull it through or a yarn under which is just the hook going over the yarn and pulling it through. All it does is twist the stitch a little bit, that's all. I, I would say the yarn under also gives you a tighter stitch which might be good if you're doing um, decreases. Six of one, half a dozen of the other. So this is this part of the iguana is kind of boring to watch because I'm using colour changing yarn. We're not having to play around with ends and hide ends and work over ends, so that's why I did it. Get around. So I hope to next week at least at least have my little little one started for you to see and I'm also going to hope to make him a bit more of a gecko than an iguana I think I like little geckos better than iguanas iguanas are big so I don't mind this one being big uh, I'm trying to figure out what size hook I would use I'm going to use the same pattern so you'll be able to see the same shapes I think I would be using a one and a half hook or a two, possibly a two. Two is what you use for machilla bags if you're using the traditional thickness of yarn, that is, a size two hook. All right, I'm not going to show you three rows of the same thing because that would be incredibly boring. So we'll just get to the end of this row. And we've already gone past it, damn it, because it's on the inside, I didn't see it. There we are. So that was the row, good thing I checked. Pull that through. And I, I usually like to do the first one afterward before I put my stitch marker on, that way it's, it's locked in place. <coughs> so I'm not going to... I'm not going to do what make you watch me do rows and rows of the plain the same stitch. So what we've done now, we've put our first front legs wire in. It has got a curve in it, so until I know how long the legs are, I'm just going to leave it as it is. I can always put a, a bend at the end and use the thinner wire and make him toes. As I said, I don't know what the foot looks like yet, so I'll hold off doing that. You might get a little bit of stuffing coming out. That's why you can just pull it back in. It doesn't matter because when you sew the leg on, it's going to make uh, it's like a, an edge around. You won't see the wire. It'll be higher than the wire. Um, and you'll stuff that in as well to shape it. And as you can see, we did a little decrease row here and it's pulled in. So that was definitely his shoulders. So we have got the wire in the right place. So from here on, we're just making the belly and then we'll put the wire across for the legs. As I add more, I will put his spine in. I may join the back legs to the spine wire, but I'm not going to join the front legs because what I'll have is I'll have that underneath pulling it up and the stitching itself when you add the leg on will pull it up as well. You want to do as little as possible. His legs won't twist around off because when you sew them on, you'll sew them in the downward position. You'll sew around the top edge of them 
and underneath, but mainly around the top edge will stop them flicking around. So you won't have to worry about that. So I think that's all I'll do today. Um, it's not a huge amount, but we're at the boring middle bit. <laughs> There's not a lot exciting to do. This is just shaping a belly. So it's basically a tube. You'll probably come down a little bit here, come out a little bit there, and then come back again for for the, the bump of his back legs. So I think that'll do today. I don't know of any other um, any other things I had to say. Uh, I'll see you again next Saturday. And I might even have some yarn next Saturday to show you. Might might get a wool famous up and so you can have a look at that. So I will stop there, get the right part, and see you next week.